Hi everyone. In this series we'll make an experiment on buggy on tracks. We're gonna try to refine it and put a hydraulic drive in our buggy. This winter turned out very snowy and there emerged a necessity of removing that snow from the large area. Couldn't have come at a better time for the buggy tank on which I always wanted to put a moldboard or a bucket. As the buggy will push not only its own weight but also the snow, it's necessary to increase the transmitted force on the tracks. The easiest thing to do is to reduce the band wheel and make it fully metallic. We need to install a band wheel in the form of gear instead of the ordinary wheel with tire. Let's get it started. To begin with we should remove the tracks. Haven't yet decided with the rollers arrangement but the band wheel can be made of metal disc. We just have to remove the tire and weld the stops from the shaped tube to it. Central rollers will be also removed and displaced later. We decided to weld the drive wheel in place and make the stops from a shaped tube. We only need 9 blanks. The first trouble is that the wheel decreased and the track began to hit the lever. We'll have to remove it and make a new one that won't interfere with the track. Now everything seems to be fine and we can tighten the disc. After we fixed it and had a check it turned out that the track hits the upper attachment of the swivel member where the strut is usually attached. We decided to cut it since the lever is attached in this place and one hole was enough. Now we can finally check how everything works. As the shape tube doesn't have sharpening at the top the track slips and loses its step. We can try to make a pike from the same tube by sawing it in half, but I'm afraid it'll turn out to be narrow and all the bars of the track can become bent. There's a more reliable option to make teeth from halves of pipe. One piece of pipe is enough for two teeth. For everything to be even we made a quarter pipe pattern. All the details will be welded in the jigging fixture. Before welding we also marked the wheel disc using a template. It turned out such a driving wheel, a track wheeled mover. I hope that the track chain won't slip with it. Since the wheel's diameter has become almost twice smaller, the buggy can easily remove snow. Now the track doesn't slip. We've got another task, to make or pick up a small truck from something that will be under the bandwheel so that it cannot touch the ground. We also tried to put the steel disc. And then the picture became clearer. The wheel stays close to the middle and the buggy is gonna constantly swing at the beginning of the movement. The track also became large, it needs to be shortened. Of course this can be corrected by the rear wheels transferring, but the actuator stroke won't be enough. We can also make a whole tracked vehicle platform, but it's rather easier to make a small tractor. Of course I've got something similar for future, but I haven't much experience so far. Actually in this series I'm gonna have some practice before some serious project. We tried another variant and still returned to the old proven linkage with the strips from the ordinary wheels. During a bucket making process there'll be much time to test one new idea. Decided to make a mount in the front of the frame. The hood would interfere so it was removed. The bucket will be attached to the frame with a bar made of shaped tube and several fixators. The bucket itself will be made of sheet metal. It'll be small and look like a moldboard, but still it'll be possible to transport some snow with it if desired. We saw off two slabs a bit wider than the tracks. Then they were welded at an angle and the sidewalls were welded. The bucket will be slightly further from the front. The main purpose is that it can rise above the snowdrift. The bucket will overturn under its weight and will be held by two latches with the hand drive. The hooks will return to their place with the help of a spring. We'll lift the entire tractor lift hitch with the help of a 12 volt winch. It pulls about a ton. I think we can make a mobile winch with the help of it in the future and pull other future projects out of mud. 
The only place where it can be installed is the roof. We welded a shaped tube to the hitch and fixators for the cable. Now all the work done earlier can be checked. On the latches you can open the semi-automatic mechanism by yourself, and they snap into their place when the bucket is lowered. Everything works. You can make some welding with the hitch, and also make a blade in the front of the bucket. We made it from a slab. After some thinking we decided to make a traction in the form of a formed lever. In case the snow will be wet and heavy the winch will have enough power to tear off the previous lever. In case the bucket hits a stone we made those stops in the central frame on which the rollers are held. Everything is done, now we can try to test the bucket in action. In the meantime the weather did its best and piled up high banks of snow that blocked half of the gates. With some difficulty I still managed to break through them. By the way up to this point I've never ridden through the snowdrifts, and I wonder whether this buggy tank can do it. Everything works. You can really clean the snow with this bucket. The only thing we need is to increase the impinging angle, so that the bucket cannot float on the snow but force its way into it. But there's another problem. The buggy doesn't have enough power to turn itself, even at speed in the deep snow. It makes it easily in the garage, with an effort on the packed snow, but the deep snow is out of its strength. I hardly managed to flip it through 180 degrees. Of course, this happened not without consequences. The clutch burned badly as I constantly had to push it along so the engine didn't cut out. Still reducing the drive will wasn't a bad idea. It's a pity that it wasn't realized. I also didn't manage to get back into the workshop that day. I had to drive down the hill, and even the tracks got stuck in the snow. I decided to wait until the next day when the packed snow hardens, and it would be really easier to drive on hard snow. While I was waiting for the next day I got another crazy idea. As I'm going to build a skid steer loader in the future, why don't I practice with a buggy in this? Moreover I already have the main components of hydraulic drive. First we removed the gearbox, it was interesting to see what happened to the clutch. By the way you don't need to put the gearbox back, it'll be replaced by the two fluid power motors. The flywheel didn't get particularly hot and the clutch plate can still be used for many further rides. The first thing to install is the hydraulic pump, the heart of the entire fluid power system. It will produce the oil pressure. I took this hydraulic pump, it'll be enough to try it. It doesn't have bearings and it's better to install it through a drive. A drive and a pump will be screwed to plate and installed in front of the flywheel. I'll connect the pump and the crankshaft with a flange and a shaft welded to it and to the drive. The pump bracket was welded to the adapter plate of the gearbox. The pump plate was screwed through the bushing as 100% of alignment couldn't be achieved. Next go the fluid power motors, this is an analog of the original motor. Quite serious thing with a rotational moment of 450 newton meters. We need to carve the bushing on its shaft. I tried new very simple way to cut the roller spline. After the slot grooving another coupling is put from above and everything is welded at the end. The only thing needs to be done is to use a reamer after the welding as the dimension can change. It's necessary to weld the flanges of the gearbox on the couplings and they can get screwed to the already installed drives without any alteration. 
Now they can be screwed to the drives. We adjusted the height and welded the fluid power motors bracket to the steel plate. The same way was made a mount for the left hydraulic motor. They'll be controlled by the Bulgarian two-section hydraulic distributor. We need to find a good place for it in the buggy cabin. I screwed a pair of high-pressure hoses for fitting at once. The location wasn't so convenient, the distributor must be lowered further. For this purpose I'll transfer the supply and the pushback, as well as other hoses up by exchanging places of the connecting tube and the filler bracket. Now the distributor is located inside the cabin in a convenient location and doesn't interfere with the driver. The distributor can now be connected to the fluid power motors. The pump was also connected. There remains to make a hydraulic tank in which there will be oil. We made it purposely with a reserve for 16 liters. It has a filler neck and a thread for the flow and pushback. The oil filter will be outside. We filled it with multi-grade low temperature hydraulic oil. We decided not to screw back the pushback to check the system. We checked all the components and realized that we've bought the wrong pump. It has left-hand rotation. Of course we didn't manage to change it due to the traces of usage. So I had to buy exactly the same pump but with right-hand rotation. After replacing the pump we tried to twist the crankshaft. By the way the engine will be started the same. The oil got pumped till the pushback and it seems like all the compounds were left dried. That means we can start the engine and try to check the entire installation. The engine speed was set to about 2,500 thousands revs as this is the nominal pump rate RPM which is better not to exceed. There will be a rapid wear and the pump's degree of efficiency will decrease. The buggy moves forward and back with no problems, but when you want to wheel the engine begins to fail. It lacks the driving moment at such speeds in order to spin the pump and accordingly a fluid power motor with a track. It's possible to wheel only on the move. Of course it's annoying but this happens practically to every single experiment, but there's always a way out. We can put a reduction gear between the crankshaft, the engine, and the pump. For example we can make a chain drive with the sprockets of different diameters. I think 1 to 3 should definitely be enough. You can also share your tips down in the comments. As a result of this series I'm so pleased with the work done. Finally I got a chance to work with the hydraulic system. In fact there's nothing complicated about that, but there are some specific nuances as in any other case. In the next part we'll try to fix all the defects and finally to clean the snow with buggy. In the meantime thanks everyone for your attention. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.